The Ferrari SF25 has been designed to allow for significant development throughout the season. Technical director Loic Serra emphasized that the concept behind the new Ferrari has changed considerably compared to the previous year. The French engineer explained that while the SF24 had been quite competitive towards the end of the season, updating and extracting more performance had become increasingly challenging, making it necessary to create room for accelerating the development process. As a result, the new Ferrari is a completely different machine, and the French technical director clarified the reasons behind this transformation. He pointed out that in these cars, everything is so finely optimized that adjusting a single component inevitably requires changes to the rest of the vehicle. Loic Serra noted that it would be inaccurate to identify the main challenge as solely related to the front suspension or any specific area, as modifying one element leads to a chain reaction affecting the entire car. According to him, the primary difficulty lay in finding the right overall balance. The most noticeable change is the adoption of a pull rod front suspension, a solution previously implemented by top teams like Red Bull and McLaren. In modern Formula One, this approach was reintroduced by Gabriele Tradozzi, a former engineer with the Minardi and Toro Rosso Formula One teams on the 2001 Minardi PS01. When asked to comment on Ferrari's decision, the Italian engineer recalled that at the time, the choice had been motivated by the advantages the pull rod offered in lowering the car's weight. The former Minardi technical director explained that with a low nose, it had helped achieve a good center of gravity, although the minimal section lever had required a stronger upper arm. Ferrari's engineers, however, aimed for aerodynamic benefits rather than mechanical ones. Gabriele Tradozzi acknowledged that the push rod strut interfered with airflow in a way that disrupted its path toward the floor. In contrast, the pull rod configuration, with its lever operating from the wheel hub toward the chassis floor, allowed for a cleaner airflow, improving control over the wake generated by the front wheels. Regarding the effectiveness of the solution, the former Minardi technical director stated that both suspension layouts could be valid, depending on the constraints imposed by regulations. He noted that the pull rod made achieving ground-level stiffness more challenging, which is crucial for grip. Thus, while the aerodynamic advantages were clear, the challenge was to ensure mechanical performance remained at the level of the push rod. However, he expressed confidence that Ferrari had done an excellent job, given Marinello's strong technical tradition. He emphasized that their design philosophy remained consistent with the Aldo Costa era, where the overall layout of the car was prioritized, rather than focusing solely on aerodynamics, even though the latter played a crucial role in performance. The SF25's front suspension design more closely resembles Red Bull's than McLaren's. Rod Marshall has pushed the boundaries with the MCL39, implementing bold concepts successfully tested on the MCL38. These include a highly inclined rear upper wishbone, not primarily to enhance the anti-dive effect under braking, but to improve airflow routing toward the floor, thereby increasing downforce. Ferrari has maintained the front steering arm, similar to the RB20, whereas the MCL39 has retained this crucial component behind the lower wishbone. Ferrari has also refined the carbon fiber cover of the steering arm, shaping it to create an airflow passage in conjunction with the lower wishbone. Another significant change is the repositioning of the front wheels further forward to maintain a 3,600 mm wheelbase following the shortening of the gearbox at the rear. This shift has been made to redistribute more mass toward the rear of the car. Additionally, the cockpit and side pod inlets have been moved further away from the front wheels to improve management of turbulent wake. However, Ferrari will need to use front ballast to comply with weight distribution regulations. The ability to use more ballast suggests that the SF25 has reached the 800 kg minimum weight limit, as an alternative scenario would imply that the car was originally slightly overweight. The structural changes become evident when comparing the new car with last year's model. Observant viewers will notice a different arrangement of the suspension arms. In 2024, the front arm of the upper wishbone had been slightly angled backward, whereas now it is perfectly straight. Additionally, F1 expert Giorgio Piola has suggested that both sides of the suspension may be connected by a single upper element passing through the chassis, a concept initially introduced by Red Bull and later adopted by Mercedes mid-season. Ferrari last employed a front pull rod suspension in 2012 with the F2012, 
continuing this layout until 2015 with the SF-15T, though with limited success. The SF-25, however, enters the final season of the current ground effect regulations with a single objective, to compete for both the Drivers' and Constructors' World Championships with Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc. Towards the end of 2023, many teams shared the common idea of implementing significant crossover between the 2024 car and the one for the following year. However, as the races progressed, they noticed that the new regulations, now in their third year of application, had become too sensitive to aerodynamic maps and that the vehicle dynamics were increasingly important in relation to aerodynamics. Practically all the top teams, some sooner than others, fell into the trap of narrowing the operating window of their cars. According to some engineers, this was largely due to the mechanical platforms. Pierre Wacha explained that with the RB20, they had lost aerodynamic load in certain parts of the aerodynamic map. He mentioned that there were gaps, and as a result, they had not achieved the on-track performance they had observed in the wind tunnel. The regulations introduced in 2022 significantly limited the mechanics of the cars since, with regard to internal components, only springs and shock absorbers could now be used, eliminating the possibility of installing dampers, such as inerters. These components had been part of the previous regulatory cycle and had been very useful for reducing vertical tire movement. These and other regulatory simplifications had led to a significant change in the mechanics of modern F1 cars, strongly limiting vehicle dynamic control and forcing teams to make more compromises since 2022. It was clear and widely agreed upon by technical experts that the simplification of the suspension group had greatly impacted the control of the ground clearance of the aerodynamic platform and, therefore, the generation of load and its use under different driving conditions. It was no coincidence that teams were no longer pursuing maximum downforce at all costs, but were rather optimizing it across the entire aerodynamic map as it was more important to have a stable and predictable car than one with enormous potential that was difficult to extract. Wache noted that the RB20 still had potential that they couldn't exploit on track due to their balance issues. He explained that after Monza and Austin, the situation had improved, but there was still a long way to go to fully exploit the potential. He acknowledged that it was always a compromise and that they had to lower the overall potential to achieve maximum performance and find a better balance. For this reason, numerous changes and optimizations were expected on the 2025 cars, particularly in terms of vehicle dynamics, whether related to the chassis or especially to the mechanical parts such as the suspension. This had already been seen on the McLaren and Ferrari SF25. The goal was to assist aerodynamics, unlocking further potential to increase the car's operating window rather than simply focusing on peak load. Fred Vasseur had announced during the Christmas lunch at Maranello speaking to Auto Racer and others, that they were in the fourth year of applying this regulation and knew their previous project very well. He revealed that the 2025 car would be completely new, 99% different from the SF24. The Marinello team had completely redesigned the front of their car to unlock significant aerodynamic gains. The front pull rod system had been designed to generate more load in that area, allowing for the cockpit to be moved further back, with a small increase in wheelbase. However, there were also significant updates at the rear. The Italian team had continued to focus on the rear pull rod layout, which would remain unique to the Italian car and, by necessity, the Haas. Ferrari had continued to believe that the push rod layout did not offer a clear advantage that justified switching, especially after the last season, where it had become clear that exaggerating the volume in the last part of the floor was unnecessary. The major miniaturization work on the internal components of the rear suspension, which had begun on the SF23 and continued on the SF24 with different allocation, had allowed the Italian engineers to retain the pull rod, with a solution that did not overly hinder aerodynamics. For the 2025 car, the team at Marinello had pushed even further, aiming to further optimize the kinematics. The gearbox had been lowered, in part, to allow some of the mechanical attachment points to be lowered. The 2025 diffuser would therefore be worked on more extensively because the gearbox would be even more immersed in the important aerodynamic component of the floor. This innovation was primarily aimed at improving rear aerodynamics, both in terms of ground clearance management and bouncing. It should be noted that the 2024 cars had returned to running considerably lower than the previous season and would continue to do so, even more exaggerated in 2025. 
This was where the management of the mechanical platform would come into play to make the aerodynamic optimizations even more impactful in terms of lap time compared to the competition.